Hey everybody, my name is Evan Wardell. I'm gonna play some music. You gotta have at least some intro, right? Okay. Uh, this song is called Getting Bigger. It's on Bunny Brawler, I believe, mm -hmm. which is under Evan Wardell Music instead of Evan Wardell, because I screwed up when I was licensing the songs, but this is what happens. You talk, is this my yeah, camera? Yeah. yeah. That, that, it's just right got a there, light on it? Yeah, yeah. I'm a professional. I'm not that old Yeah, I know the way that I look Cause There's this feeling that I get it comes from my chest And it's hard to come away unshook It's getting bigger Sick of being taught that I am who I'm not. Yeah, you'd be shocked to know who said it today. Cause there's this feeling that I get, it comes from my chest. And I'm sick of acting like it's okay. It's getting bigger. been talking all night about getting better and you're right sometimes just feeling it is good for the soul but there's still this gap in my heart and addressing it's the start but I'm the only one who can make it whole it's getting bigger Yeah.
did it. They did it. Bit. Wow. It's so hard to actually be able to play two instruments simultaneously and sing. Oh, yeah. I hate it. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakyan. Very excited to be talking about singing and songwriting. We have Evan Wardell joining us on the show. It's me. Hello. Thanks for coming on. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Alan. Very excited, very excited. Evan Wardell and I were first introduced at Piano Fight, which is this awesome indie theater here in downtown San Francisco. And that's also where Ron and I met. And Ron and Evan know each other as well from working at Piano Fight. So it's really cool to be able to see you, you know, in the state of being a musician as well, rather yeah. than just doing, you know, technical work and audio engineering and that type of stuff, light work, etc. Yeah. I've still subconsciously worn my theater tech blacks <laughs> that you're supposed to wear when you're doing uh, tech work in theater, so no one can see you. It's like camouflage. You wear black clothes, you disappear into the night. And for those that don't know, Evan Wardell's background, Evan Wardell's an SF-based musician, songwriter, and audio engineer. His music blends vitriolic passion with meandering psychedelia into a soup of poppy hook laden indie rock that seeks to understand just what makes its creator tick and you can find evan's links below both to his band camp as well as to his podcast uh we the listeners.com and also his spotify instagram and twitter so evan it's we the listeners with a z with the z that's right and that link is below with we alan the you're listeners better than my publicist z. I don't have a publicist. <laughs> not yet. That's no, not the, yet. Not yet. Ron's my key. publicist. Ron's the publicist. Right, He's doing Ronnie? a shit job. Yeah. <laughs> Ronnie, get him more gigs. Come on. What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. Don't wait for me. <laughs> so that's a little background on Evan. Evan, I want to start things off by asking. We're going to dive deeper into the music and the meaning of it and why it makes you tick. We're going to talk about that. I want to start things off with your current analysis on the state of humanity. Oh boy, yes. I like the I like the nice, easy, just really easing into the conversation. Um, hmm. Uh, we live. Geez, God, analysis in the current state of society mm -hmm. of yeah, the world. Yeah, humanity. It's bad out there, folks. Humanity in general. It's bad out there. Didn't you just finish a gorgeous guitar and harmonica and singing song? How's yeah. It? So it's getting big. Yeah, yeah. You try to make it better in here because it's so bad out there. Um, it's not that great in here all the time, but you know, <laughs> the music's fun. Um, God, I don't know. Uh, we live in a time where where we have like unprecedented unprecedented levels of like wealth and uh, like production of goods, and you still look around and see like pain and suffering everywhere, and it sucks. And social media is fun, but also turns you into a crazy person. Mm. And uh, it, it lets you indulge in your most um, basic and probably unhealthy uh, instincts. Well, write a song. Oh, death and sorrow and greed and murder. Did you listen to the lyrics, Ron? That's basically what it is. <laughs> most of my yeah. songs are really about like, God, I don't want to get up today. I don't feel like going out. I'm so bummed out. They do. They do have a, <laughs> that, that flavor. Yeah, but you put like a nice melody and thing around it, and people get hopefully people get sucked into the the nice way it sounds, and then they listen to it and go, "Oh God, is this guy okay?" Would you say <laughs> that the juxtapositions of having so much globalized abundance while simultaneously having the degree of suffering that we have or the way that we use social media to get good messages out, but also in terms of the way that it disconnects humans from actual visceral eye to eye experiences, this type of thing and trolling to trolls and stuff. Would you say that these juxtapositions are one of the reasons why you have that degree of melancholy in the music? Probably. Yeah. I mean... You know, it's hard to track any individual feeling back to some, like, larger, like, story or system. You know, there's, there's, like, a degree to which I can make that connection and understand why it's a compelling story. But it's not like I... Actually, no, it is true. I've definitely gone on Facebook and been like, I feel so alienated and terrible. I'm like, <laughs> I'm not seeing my friends. I'm looking at this stupid thing. And it definitely does create... Uh, you know melancholy on the 
the the lightest thing it causes is melancholy. If I only get melancholy out of it, that's like nice. Usually it's like you know more depression and like actual sadness. Um, and does this have to do with the way that you view both the way civilizations currently um, existing and then your your alternative potential world that we could live in if we just organized ourselves better? So I said that again? That does the degree of sadness slash depression come from the way that you see existing civilization see, and you yeah, see yeah. the potential that we could be organized better and, you, and that gap is what causes the well, morning despair? To be honest, you know, it was the... It was just the the feeling bad for a long time and uh, finding like some sort of story to help explain all of that isn't something that you know I really came to until like I don't know like three years ago or whatever um, especially you know after like the 2016 election um, it's like a real real bummer for a lot of people but uh, I was definitely one of the people who's like radicalized by the uh, the sort of uh, leftist analysis of the world that was offered up by like Bernie Sanders and then like the other people that I sort of found out in the world with uh, you know more concrete and specific analysis um, that helped sort of explain a thing that I had sort of just like felt intuitively for a long time and I think a lot of people just feel it feel intuitively that like things are kind of messed up and they're kind of like depressed or anxious and they're not really sure why um, so yeah I think like with me specifically, and I would even like venture, I would even like guess most people, they could, they have the feeling first. They don't know why it is. They're just like, I feel like shit today. And then they wake up the next day and they're like, I still feel like shit today. But um, then you wake up all, turn, all their days and you're like, I feel ecstatic? Yeah. Like, yeah. Ecstatic is rare, but <laughs> sometimes I wake up and feel fine. That's good. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm always going for. I'm just trying to hit fine. If I can get like, okay... You know, then that's good. Yeah, yeah, Ron, go ahead. What do you uh, What do you drink on a regular basis? I know we got the wine going on what right now. Yeah, you like whiskey or vodka or uh, whatever oil, the fine shivas. bartenders at Piano Fight serve me. <laughs> Shout out. So, couple, so as as we move, we're trying to inspire the kids. You know, <laughs> See, we're talking about You're trying no to inspire whole, the yeah, kids. Well, yeah, you know, by getting them drunk. Yeah, life is bad, kids. Well, you don't have to get drunk. Get hammered at piano fight. Well, you, you don't You'll have to probably get drunk. see me there. Let's 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 transition to the journey side of things. So, all right. Ah, uh, the journey. The journey. That's right. Yes, because I think this will give also deeper insight into the why the way you, you feel the way you do at times. Um, Ronnie, turn those turn that phone on silent, if you could, <laughs> please. Thank you. Um, I feel like I feel like we got way too hard into, into depression real quickly, but yeah, yeah, yeah. you brought up the state of the world. Uh, yeah, I'll call yeah. You back. Well, that's some yeah, people. Yeah, show. So, yeah. yeah, I'll call you back. Yeah, he's literally right. talking on the back. phone yeah, on the microphone. Those big bucks. <laughs> Give me those Ladies and gentlemen, big bucks. Yeah, yeah. Showrunner Ron Vargas talking on the phone. I was into perpetrating. the microphone. I was per perpetrating. So okay, okay. So born in Martha's Vineyard over okay. on the East Coast was Evan Wardell, and then that was me. Decided. Uh, about 10 years ago to move to the Bay Area mm -hmm. and you were trying to get far away from home. Yeah. On an adventure with your girlfriend at the time. It all started in the Shire. Oh, yeah. So tell us about this. Uh, well, I found this magic ring. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, you know, I think uh, a lot of people uh, grow up in a place when they're a kid and want to, like, get out of it, you yeah. know? Um, uh, yeah, so I moved... <laughs> To the other side of the country. <laughs> Did you pick up your artistic interests um, when you were young, like music? Yeah, I've been playing guitar since I was like, I don't know, I want to say ten or so. I remember, I remember the specific moment when I wanted to play guitar. It was at like an end of the year, um, like barbecue at the middle school I went to, and a friend of mine got up and started playing. They had like a band, and a friend of mine like went up and played guitar on stage you know with uh just some of the like uh, some of the parents who were there and i was like that is the coolest thing i've ever seen i want to do that i must do that and so i demanded you know i just wouldn't just bothered my parents forever and ever till they bought me a guitar um and yeah i just 
went along from there. Yeah. Okay, so then started singing and songwriting and playing guitar, all this stuff? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I think it was pretty clear, like, as soon as... Because, like, music is... I feel like music is a great escape for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. That, um, And it definitely was for me. And uh, I kind of felt intuitively that, like, I'd have... I wanted to, like, write things. You know, I didn't just want to play the songs that I know or that I liked. In fact, like, the idea of doing that was, like... I mean, it's fun, obviously. But it, I could feel it just felt kind of like cheap because it's like when you hear a song you hear the full recorded song like all the instruments and the drums and the singing and the whatever and you know as soon as you like play those uh first couple chords and like smoke in the water like dum, bum, 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 that every guitar teacher teaches you when you start playing guitar you're like this doesn't sound like the song i need to uh record a bunch of guitars together and you know all that uh so i immediately went to like well, I have to write something because then I can sort of play it on my own and it'll, and it'll sound the way I want it to sound. And then as soon as I did that, I was like, this needs more instruments on it. Uh, and then I had a little like, um, uh, like hand-me-down uh, stereo from my parents and it had two tape decks on it and you could record on one of the tape decks. And then I realized you could take that tape, put it in the second tape deck, press play on that one and then when you put another put a blank take tape in the other one to re in the first cassette tape deck to record onto it'll record whatever's playing on the first tape okay yeah. so then i realized you could overdub so you could i could play like a couple chords record it on one tape mm -hmm. put it into the next tape slot put a fresh tape into the first tape deck press play hit record and then record like a little solo over it or whatever mm -hmm. and that's how i discovered multi-track multi recording recording <laughs> uh that's some that's really important yeah, yeah and that that was really it was like really liberating and sort of like blew my mind and as soon as you figure that out like you know your brain goes to all the places like oh i could put drums on this i could you yes. know i could do this whole thing myself yes and so i've been you know doing that ever since i guess yeah <laughs> yeah wow that i love that moment of of inspiration for you for realizing yeah. multi track recording and then like to, to do with tapes yeah, to, with tapes too. Yeah, not just digitally like we now have. Uh, oh, that was funny because like each time, because then I just switched the tapes to get the next oh, track yeah. onto it. And yeah. the more times you record on a tape, the quality just degrades and degrades does, and degrades. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. by the time you get to the end of it, it sounds terrible. Terrible. But you're like, it's all there. It's all there. Yeah, yeah. And it was like really exciting as a kid. Um, and what? And so, what were the first couple um, uh, instruments that you decided as your as for your multi track? recording as well as your singing as well yeah well it's just yeah it was like guitar and yeah and singing this guitar first i knew i wanted to like sing so i could sing the songs that i write um but it was like a terrible singer forever totally yeah I'm still i'm still thing. marginal i'm getting there <laughs> i liked uh, it I can you play it. the banjo uh the banjo is a terrible it's a terrible instrument but if you could play the banjo you'd probably play like foggy mountain breakdown and then I, I might i would uh i would no i would take it outside and i would burn it like like, a, like an adult no the banjo's fine the, the banjo is a pain in the ass to play though because it's like the strings are super high off the frets the neck is like so this neck mm -hmm. is as wide as it as it is and banjo necks like that thin yeah, yeah, yeah so it's just like weird to get your hand yeah, around it yeah. and it's uh, it's just the the high this the string that's the furthest on the top is the highest in pitch which on a guitar it's the lowest in pitch but then it goes to a low one is next and then it gets like it's just confusing to play um what are we talking about the banjo it, for it, you brought it up oh all right it's all he your knows, fault he knows Ron's like Ron's a hidden hidden troll. Oh yeah, no, he's an out in the open troll. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know if it, but he he relies on people forgetting. Oh, where did we hear about the banjo from? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So okay, so I love I love the first dose into the into the multi track recordings. That's that's really important. And then then what about you know who you were when you were in high school and then deciding you wanted to get away from from everything and go uh, to the West Coast. Um, geez, who I was in high school was uh, a weirdo, a desperate weirdo. 
Um, were, were we all to some degree? Yeah, like, like that's what high school is. You're like yeah. crazy and desperate. I'm like, Not all me. I knew is I didn't like my parents and I wanted to hang out with my friends. Yeah, yeah, um, pretty much. Yeah. And I liked playing guitar, and that was like the three things that I knew. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was an interesting experience. I mean, I'm I'm still super close to my friends that I met in high school to this day. So like, it was a really like good important part of my life. Like, it seems like an eternity, but it was like. And it, even just like the last two years of high school were the were the good ones, but I still just imagine that that was all of high school for some reason. Um, Your parents got you a guitar, so shout out to they did. You know. Yeah, shout out mom and dad. Yeah, got a guitar. That's that's important when a kid wants to yeah. explore into the music. Now, what about um, the transition to the West Coast? Uh, yeah, God, that was so long ago. I moved here like ten years ago in two thousand nine. Um, one of the dumbest just blunders just no thinking at all i'm like it was 2009 so it was right after the huge economic crash um i remember um and of, co of course i was like 21 so mm -hmm. i'm like i wasn't thinking about anything i'm just like i'll move there i'll get a job whatever it'll be fine i was like unemployed living off savings forever um i remember just like 20 people trying to get the same barista job at starbucks it was like it was a nightmare um, but I did bumble my way into a rent controlled apartment, which I didn't know was rent controlled or even what rent control was when I did. Now, 10 years later, I'm still living in that same apartment and pay the same for like a 500 square foot single bedroom apartment as like many people I know pay for a single bedroom. So like, I'm, it's funny that I moved here at a time that was such a terrible time to try to move somewhere to find a job, but conversely rent was way cheaper yeah, yeah. um still like more expensive than most of the country totally, totally. um ended up being your one of your greatest treasures today is the fact that you yeah. went through this big risk and you moved out to the west coast in a time when you were in your early 20s to pursue something that was uncertain for you but that oh, yeah. you thought would reap some good treasures yeah and you know i benefited from a fair amount of privilege so it was like i'm kind of like I, I feel like I cheated a little bit. Like, I didn't have to scrape that hard. I, like, blew through all my savings, but, you know, eventually found a job. Um, and what were you doing when you first moved your booty out here? You know, hanging out. Yeah. Trying to find work and failing a lot. Yeah. I worked for the 2010 census as oh, an enumerator, enumerator. Walking around the Tenderloin, knocking on people's doors and be like, hey, how many people live here? Yeah, I'm yeah. with the U.S. government. I'm with the U.S. And people are like, government. Nope. Yeah, it was weird. Yeah, but it paid really well. Um, it's a good thing about government jobs; they pay really good. And um, I got a really cool side pack, side bag that I still have, and it's been like probably the thing that's sparked the most conversation with strangers in my entire life. People are like. What is the U like? They're like you have a U.S. Census Bureau bag. Yeah, yeah. It's got the big seal on it. Yeah, and it's just a really funny like U.S. Census Bureau. Yeah, everyone's everyone yeah. wants to know That's about great. the Census Bureau bag. That's great. Yeah, they want to know what questions you're asking. Excuse me, how many people live in this building? Yeah, I'm yeah. with the U.S. government. Yeah, we yeah. So it's important. You have to you knowing how many people are actually residing in the in the lo cities and in the country. Um, <clears throat> Evan, now what about this this continuation of of the desire for being an artist and a singer-songwriter, how did that continue with you into the Bay Area and start its own evolution here? Um, to be perfectly honest, I think it just embedded itself in me when I was a teenager. Yeah. And just uh, attached itself to my, like, ego and sense of self. So I just have to do it or I feel like I'm not doing something right, you know? Um, it's, it's weird because... That's definitely how some sort of like hobby or artistic endeavor, I feel like, first gets you, in a way. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, I've since then uh, found uh, an amount of, like, not really purpose, but, like, meaning in writing songs. Because before I was just trying to, like, make something that sounds good, but now I've been doing it for long enough that I can finally like write stuff where I'm like trying to say something even if that something is just like inane <laughs> or just like uh, myopic or whatever um, but 
yeah it's 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 hard to see how i don't know about like artistic drive specifically just like i feel like i have to do it and it kept like every single week or two weeks or month or so you were at least performing writing i mean sometimes sometimes you go like weeks without doing without anything doing and sometimes you go and you really want to work on a song multiple days in a row yeah. that type of stuff yeah i like have periods where i'm just like non-stop doing it um yeah, and then yeah. periods where i just like don't pick up a guitar for like two weeks Interesting. <laughs> you know yeah yeah um it's like hard to find uh motivation and inspiration a lot but you're on you're on your way now you're i mean you're on spotify now your newest album little boys on spotify now and it's fantastic i like it a lot thank you and this these are the types of moves though that i think are awesome to see artists and entrepreneurs doing which is finding that spark within to go and and build and create and especially for all the young people that watch around the world it's that finding that spark within and just surrounding yourself with other people that can help you ignite your own spike you ignite their sp sparks and yeah and, and building up from there yeah yeah so okay let's let's do um an explanation of um some of the um the meaning from the first song getting bigger and also <laughs> and also ex explain to us okay. the, the complexity of the uh of of you're doing you you are yourself literally walking uh, multi-track yourself because you're doing guitar harmonica singing um all at once and that's really really interesting um so teach us about the complexity of that as well as the meaning of getting bigger okay complexity wise uh this instrument is horrible it makes a fun sound sometimes but it also as you're playing with it it uh you asked about complexity. This is going to be me complaining about the harmonica. Uh, <laughs> I like, I've had a lot of out-of-tune harmonicas in my life, um, and it's why I fall off playing it and then get back into playing it, because inevitably it like, goes out of tune. Um, there's like probably a tiny little range in here that's like good enough in tune that I feel good about it. How do you tune a harmonica? You, you don't. <laughs> you buy a new one. Uh, you Damn. can tune them, but the way that you tune it is literally... You get some tiny files, and you go into these holes. And you have to file, uh, depending, but you can't even see what you're filing. So you have to find the read that you want to. There's two reads in every hole. There's like the the suck read and the blow read. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And you have to go in and file it at a different spot, either at the base or the tip, depending on if that read is sharp or flat. You have to literally file it. Yeah. Metal on metal. Yeah. No one does that. People just buy new harmonicas. Yeah, they cost like twenty bucks. No, well, that's the thing. The twenty dollars one suck. I like. I like went out and bought this one for fifty bucks, and I did my research. I like looked at forums. They're like, okay, this is the best. Is this, it a Honor? It's a. Uh, what is it? I think it's an Oscar. Oscar, whatever the hell. Right, the Oscar, whatever the hell. Brand. Yeah, the Oscar, what have you? <laughs> yeah, I forget. <laughs> That was no, great. No, Oscar no, no, Schmidt? No, 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 free, no free plugs. We'll invoice you later. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, to be honest, I don't really know a whole lot about harmonicas. The only, thing I, the only things I know about them are like my experiences with them, and they're a pain in the ass, and they don't like to keep a tune. And then also, while you're playing it, um, like you've got to position it just so on your face if you're playing guitar at the same time. And I know while I'm playing and singing, I like salivate a lot, so my spit will get into it. And it'll the spit will physically block the hole, so I'll try to like go to hit a note, and it'll just go, yeah. and then like it'll push the spit out and go, and like make a terrible noise. Yeah, yeah. but it's just a it's a weird, difficult instrument. Uh, uh, my friend, my friend and co-host of my podcast, uh, Bobby Good, once described it as the uh, the wet and smelly mistress, because it also always smells like your breath because you've like got your mouth on it. Yeah, yeah, the whole time, and, and it's the old like, saliva uh, yeah. that's germs that have built up over time. Yeah, interesting. Okay, now, um, how about combining these these the harmonic guitar and your singing all into one? Now, you know, we we feature a lot of neuroscientists, and we talk about the cognitive resources that you're allocating to guitar versus harmonica versus singing. Okay. Does it feel like you're having a task switch between the three? Not. 
So guitar, I can pretty much do on autopilot. On autopilot, yeah. The the song I just played is a little harder because the the chord shapes aren't like normal, so I have to think a little bit more. But I can kind of ignore it for the most part once I'm into it. It's like, and you'll see if you if you go back and re rewatch the thing I just did because I know I do this all the time. Is the first time I hit a new part, I'll flub that a little bit. And then I'll find it, and then the next time I've just got it, and I don't have to think about it. Oh, it's yeah. almost like I have to re, like, get my brain onto the like the 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 ingrained neural pathway that's been created by me doing it over and over again. And once I'm there, I can I can do it. And it's the same with like the beginning of lines, like the first note or two might not be quite on, but then I can like get it for the rest of it. Um, so yeah, I definitely have to devote most of my. Uh, when I'm when I'm basically the the guitar is the easy one, and then I have to think more about singing or harmonica is like pr like h pretty hard for me. I'm not that great at it. Um, I definitely have to think about it a lot. And I only have you have to buy a different key for each each harmonica it has to be a different key. So this is an F harmonica, mm -hmm. so I can only play uh, harmonica on songs in F. So I have to like capo move this capo around and like change the tuning um, to if I want to play harmonica on a song. I have a lot of songs like the song I just played is uh, in E so I had to capo it up a fret so then I'm in F um, and then also some songs I can't it's in a weird key for me to sing so I, I'm just like well I can't play harmonica on this one because um, I can't be bothered to buy another harmonica uh, but these are some interesting nuances of being a musician is that when you have a sequence in one of your songs and you have this transition, you know, maybe the guitar is, is more of a autopiloted algorithm. And then when you have to add your to harmonica and you kind of have to, you know, discreet, you know, you're rediscovering what, where, where that exactly is at precisely. And then you're like, oh, yeah, that's OK. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And also like with the guitar there's like in there's frets and I can kind of feel them and there's also these dots here interesting so can, there's no place with your mouth yeah, you like just, just like a computer keyboard with the F and the yeah. J you can feel where that's at bumps this yeah. I just I kind of know it's like about here about there yeah, yeah so I have to like blow a little bit and, and luckily it's, since the whole thing's in the key of F I can kind of like blow and like move my mouth up till I find the right note and it'll still sound okay because all of these notes work in the key of the song I'm playing in but it is a weird and every time I just go like, um, like I'm paying attention to the guitar part I'm playing, and then go, oh god, I gotta start playing this harmonic part, and just like put my face on and blow, and it's the right note. I'm like, awesome. Yeah, feels like I totally lucked into the right the right spot, which is which is fun. And then how about some of the meaning uh, to the music of getting bigger specifically? And then we'll play up Chuck after this. Um, well the. The music or the lyrics? The, the uh, to the meaning of the lyrics of getting yeah. bigger. Yeah, yeah. The lyrics, I feel like it's pretty straightforward. So it's sort of over the top, dramatic. Um, but I, I like that style. I like to sort of like <laughs> lean into the the weird drama of a thing. And give us some of the lyrics. Yeah, it's uh, the the chorus part. It, the verses are basically um, talking about. Let's see. So the first verse is like. Sick of being told that I'm not that old. Yeah, I know the way that I look, which is just a f funny anecdote from life because I get a lot. Of, I look way younger than I am. Mm -hmm. If I like shave, I get carded if I want to buy tobacco, which I don't do anymore, Mom. I remember when we first met that you were, you were big on letting me know that you know you weren't as young as you might have thought. I thought you were. Look, a lot of us have some pathologies. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I just you, know what mine are. But you're still not that old. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you. No, I know. It's just because you're ancient. Yeah, that, I've, that, I'll give you that. <laughs> I've been around the block. I've been um, here for a while. Yeah. But anyway, so that was just... That's, I don't know. That was the whatever struck my head at the moment when I wrote that. Um, but yeah, and then... But, so I being told... But there's this feeling that I get. It comes from my chest. I'm sick of acting like it's okay. So it's kind of like the sad thing. I'm like, I'm, I know I look like a young, fresh kid, but sometimes I can be bummed out too. And all the verses kind of follow this thing. And then at the end, they reference this hole or this gap. And then 
the chorus part is just and it's getting bigger and then I guess that's not the chorus that's more like a pre-chorus I don't know it's hard to de decide what's what um, and then the actual chorusy part is we're not going to fill it today which is like sort of an admonition uh, directed at myself to be like stop being such a bummer and stop being so down on yourself sitting here and like kvetching over it isn't going to like fix anything interesting and a lot of the lyrics to my songs kind of follow that pattern in one way or another yeah where it's a lot of just sort of because like when i write stuff a lot of the time i'm just in a bad mood and it's like an outlet for that so mm -hmm. i'm kind of like singing about how i'm not feeling great and then by the end of it i'm by the end of like writing the thing when i'm like in the sort of like writing flow space it like feels really good and then i like feel better again and so i want to put like a happy sort of like or just at least a positive uh forward thinking uh sort of like coda to the whole thing like i don't want every song to just be about being bummed out unless i can get to the end of it and be like you know there's hope there's there's uh there's there's there's, there's a reason to keep doing whatever we're doing you know yeah yeah that's this is another one of those you you also kind of follow uh, uh like you just described this path of 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 expressing yourself through your lyrics and then also re uh exp expressing through your lyrics the way that you want to motivate yourself at the same time so it's kind of a a little bit of a of a roller coaster as well oh which, yeah yeah no, yeah, you have to have, and that just works on an artistic level. You have to like have some sort of journey in the piece. You know, you want it to like start one place and end another place. I like to, and as of, I wrote that song probably like, actually, I think I wrote the original bit like three, four years ago, and then didn't finish it until maybe two or three years ago. Um, and, uh, oh, what was I saying? But by the time I got to the end of it, it was like, um, I've completely lost my train of thought. No, uh, what did I say? Song, we were still talking about the song getting bigger, but let's. Yeah. You were talking about your stint at MIT. Yeah, my stint yeah, at MIT. Yeah, yeah. Broke yeah. a lot of hearts. <laughs> and then, okay, let's transition. And ex expensive equipment. To, yeah. To the, to the, to the new album. Little boy, we have Upchuck Downtown City Slicker Blues. Oh yeah, short for you. Short call it Upchuck. Yeah. Yes. Every trade secret. Every band. Every musician calls all of their songs something other than what they're called. <laughs> uh, I I have to remember all of my songs. I call all of my songs because I, I hate writing names for them. I just like I don't know. It's annoying to me. Uh, because I feel like just calling it the name of whatever's in the chorus is just sort of like reductive and like, dude, yeah, yeah, like you didn't yeah, use any like, yeah. it's not an artistic process uh, to name a song with a thing that everyone's going to remember it by, yeah, yeah, yeah. which now, but then I've realized just as a practical matter, you should just do that so Correct. people can practical, find it. Practical so they can yeah. find it. That's right. Yeah. So it's an interesting balance between the practicality of the chorus and what you say a lot, naming that the song versus wanting to be like different than everyone else. Yeah. Or just like, I want to feel like I'm not just doing something in some sort of like rote, uh, yeah. un, uh, intentional way. You know, I'm just like, this is what it should be. So I'll do that. Um, when in reality, that's just what you should do because, you know, it makes it easier for people to find it. Find and it, yeah. you know, I don't really care what the song's called that much, but what I call all my songs so I can remember them is the first lyric of the first verse, literally the first thing I have to sing in the song is the thing I remember the song as, so I can just, um, you know, it like puts me in the headspace to do it or whatever, you know? Just when I'm, when I'm like putting a, together a set uh, and I see the words written, I don't, the first couple lyrics written, I don't have to think about what song it is. I'm like, oh, it's the yep. one that starts there. Yep, yep. Ron, do you have a thought before we enter in the song? Well, I thought it was cool the other night when uh, I had asked Google to play uh, music from Evan Wardell, and they came up. I want to know what it is that uh, that they decide what track it is that they're going to play. Uh, were you aware that you could ask Google to play music from you, and that they they can deliver? 
Um, uh, me and Google aren't on speaking terms. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I've only recently started to ask Siri about things. I got some Hue light bulbs at home. I'm really psyched. I can walk into my home and be like, Siri, make the lights red, and then we'll go like, it's cool. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Voice is a major part of the future. Some people are calling it a, even up to a trillion dollar uh, industry in just voice algorithms. It's going to be a massive part of our future. All right. Great. Yeah, it's crazy. Let's jump into um, Upchuck Downtown City Slicker Blues. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. All right. Very excited. Transform. Uh, this song. Surprise, surprise. is about the city, I guess. All right. I want to get a good uh, mix here. Ron wants to get a good mix. I, just, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing anyway. Hold on, everybody. Ron's got to get a good mix. I'm going to adjust this a little bit. Thanks. So it's funny. The two themes that I write are like, I'm bummed out. And then the other one is like, walking down the street, you know. <laughs> like uh, Medical Mechanica is a song that I tried to wrote, write. To I it. love that. I it's, love that song. We, we both love that song a lot. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people really like that one. And that's literally me trying to create an aesthetic that feels like walking through the city at night, like walking home mm -hmm. from like a bar or whatever. And it's just sort of like like hazy and like trippy. and so that, that's, that's a good way one. to describe it. Yeah. I think I really succeeded with what I was going for there. I remember Ron actually was playing um, Medical Mechanica when um, he was sitting right there. And, and I go... Who is that? And he goes, that's Evan Wardell. And I go, what? That's <laughs> dope. And then that's when we were like, let's like look up Evan's newest album. Let's have him on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's a good song. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all my friends who, anytime anyone, in, anytime any of my friends are like, I liked that thing you did, it's always that song. Which is good, because I love that song too. I'm glad uh, I have good friends with good taste. Yes, yes. Uh, all right, this one... It's about the city, I guess? I don't know. <laughs> it's not an F, so I can't play harmonica. <laughs> And I shuffle my way across town Gonna meet a woman Trying to keep all my lunch meat down And everybody everywhere Are wanting a piece of me now Cause I'm living on the surface While I'm working for the underground Oh, they're yammering and clamoring Demanding I tell them how Oh, a free Just a bore. What for? Guts and I hop on an eastbound train Just keep thinking about the record While I'm choking on my higher brain And everybody everywhere are all gonna feel the same As we all get together and talk about our imminent fame Hey, I know it sounds crazy But it really isn't all that the same Cause I'm right here And I don't fear Cheap or knock off Taunts and jeers, and I know. Yeah, I know. Guess I should go. But I guess we'll all find out. out. Eventually, they'll have to show us how. Stalling us, they're 
trying to sell us out And nobody is anywhere in any position now To lecture me and set me free without A million pounds and broken mouths to tell And can't you see You might as well be Just another asshole Just like me just another asshole, just like me. A quiet doubt, a face in the crowd. Let's do it now. Yeah, let's do it now. Make it loud. That was great. Yeah. That's the song. Evan, hell yeah. Thank hell you, yeah. thank you, thank you. Now, the, the, there's so many good questions along with this one. Um, one, one. That Why? I, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Well, we'll, we'll, be, I won't, we'll get to, um, um, you know, meaning. Oh, of, you got me water. Of Thank lyrics. You. Yes, yes, we got water for you. Um, yes, meaning. So, meaning of lyrics. We'll get there. I want to ask you how you pick where to have things like a solo happen. Um, how? Yeah. How do you pick? You know how to how to when you when you go and you're you know you're really strumming fast across the strings versus when you're strumming slower. You know how do you how do you pick your 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 increases in energy versus your kind of slow. Yeah, downs, you, know? um, you just have to use your um, perfectly curated impeccable taste. I mean, it, it literally is just like, I feel it, you know, I'm just yeah. like, this feels like it needs to do this now. Um, I'll like be playing a song and then I get to a certain point and I'm like, and I, I just, I just feel like I want it to have this sort of energy change, you know? Um, and so I'd find the way to do that. I mean, I'm all about the sort of like ebb and flow of a song. I like it yeah. to get big, and then small, and That's then like cool. groovy, and then yeah. I like it to hit all these notes. Um, and you can feel it in this one. Yeah, this one has a lot going on in terms of like energy changes, including like playing one part multiple times with different amounts of energy. Because like the song is really simple at its core, note wise. There's really just there's a verse and the chorus and and a pre-verse, which is basically the verse but louder and with a little like melody over it, and then like the the bridge, which is its own separate thing. Um, at least in the way that I think about it, it's like, it's really simple. But you kind of like play with those volumes going up and down, um, and yeah, it's that's the one thing that I, it's not like a really. I don't know that I could describe any sort of process. I just like kind of, it's like a feeling. It's like it's like a, a, a painter in front of a easel being like, I don't know, this needs red, you know? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's almost as though the music is channeling through you and you're feeling the how it's flowing through you. I want to ask, how similar is this to writing? Let's say we're writing an article, we're writing a story, whatever. Maybe we're trying to tell a story, let's say, and that... How does it feel like when you sit down and you're writing your music? Does it feel like you can really get through a decent amount of like an outline, like a story arc of what you want to tell, and then you come back later and fill it in a little bit? Or teach us about what that's like. Um, I usually begin at a like purely aesthetic place um, where I just find just a little a little kernel of something I like, um, be it a chord change. Mm or a rhythm it's usually it's usually a set of chords with a rhythm with maybe a bit of melody over it or um, even if there's not a specific melody within the chords there's a sort of implied melodic progression um, that I like or am attracted to somehow um, and then 
I just kind of build it from there, you know? I'll be like, I have this thing I like, and I'll go back and play it every once in a while. I've gotten in the past couple of years really into taking notes on my phone, and just like when I have a thing that I really like, I'll break up my phone, just record whatever amount of it I have, and then just forget about it. And then I'll come back to it like maybe a month later when I've just completely forgot it even existed and, you know, see if it like still feels inspiring and cool and like something I should work on. Um, Cause for a long time I would do this. I'd write these kernels of things and just forget them. Yeah, I'd yeah. be like, Oh, I kind of like this. I don't know. I guess I'll play with it later. I have some, I have a, a, a lyric book that I write all my lyrics in that I definitely have some lyrics in there that I'm like, I don't remember at all what's supposed to go to this. Um, so you can keep these little bits of really strong chord changes or um, or whatever it may be, and then you can kind of plug and play potentially at later times if, if you haven't embedded it yet into one of your pieces. Yeah. That's cool. I like that. It's like you're building up a, uh, a modular library of unique uh, musical... Yeah, I'd yeah. say it's rare that two things I came up with independent of each other like get combined into something together. Interesting. It's usually each little thing becomes its own song. Okay, okay. Um, I've definitely like written lyrics for a song that ended up in another song. But it's pretty rare that they combine. You know, it's more just like... Uh, it's a notebook, you know? And you would build a, bunch a of around, ideas. you build a song around something that you really liked. Yeah. Like, interesting. Yeah. That's cool. And then it's um, like I found this cool thing and it really does it doesn't feel like writing, it feels like mining, you know. Just like I went to the mines today and came up with this gem. Uh I'll put this over here and maybe go try to like cut it into a shape and polish it later, you know. Yeah. And it does almost feel like independent of my like almost doesn't feel like I'm doing it, you know? It doesn't feel like I'm sitting there and writing a thing out. It's just like I bang my head against this piece of this nugget until something comes out of it that I like. Like I feel like like verses will come out pretty almost like whole formed for me, you know? I'll just like hit on a sort of lyrical progression that I like that almost writes itself. Um, it's like, you know, I, I think in a way it's sort of like you are mining. You are mining those like neural pathways in your brain that you, that have that have been primed to sort of um, string together a piece of things, a bunch of things that you like in some way, and like you s strike on one and it goes like zip 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 zip, you get a whole verse like all of a sudden. I'm like, yeah. oh, where'd that come from? Uh, yeah. But yeah, this is another interesting part of the artist's uh, processes when you when you find something like a really interesting permutation of some music or some writing or whatever your creative endeavoring is, if you kind of put it in your library and store it for a bit, there's an opportunity cost because A, yes, you may come back to it at a later time with a fresh mind and be able to add to it and then release it, but also it can just get stored in your library and you can forget about it and not actually bring it forth as a gem into the world. So there's kind of an interesting opportunity cost with that. Yeah, it, I think it kind of depends the thing is, like, one way or another, I'm going to write a little bit of a thing. I'm not going to finish. It's, I've, I think I've only, only, like, once in my life have I ever just, like, s sat down to write a song and written the whole thing, you know? Yeah. Maybe once that's ever happened. Yeah, yeah. I always come up with a verse and then have to, like, or, like, a verse and chorus and then have to come back to it later. Yes, yes. Um, and silence usually helps a lot with these things. Like if you just sit, if you just sit and you're not by your technology and you're just more, um, just, just in, enjoying your environment. Yeah, I found I really like to write in the morning, ah. like when I wake up before my brain's been polluted by the world. Yeah, there, you know, interesting. Something about just like making breakfast and coffee and not being plugged into like yes the stuff the matrix yeah, the yeah. matrix. <laughs> uh, is you kind of have that time to sort of like brood or whatever and it's yep i don't know i just i guess i feel just like more optimistic and like sensitive in the morning i'm not beaten down by the world yet mm. there's still hope for the day mm -hmm. uh unless i'm like super hungover although i've written a ton of songs hungover too so uh do you write when you're um under the influence i mean do you, do you hang on to do you, oh, I, can I you save suck. anything? Okay. I'm I suck when I'm like drunk or Perfect. whatever. I can't I can't do anything. Thank you. 
Um, creative endeavoring. Um, now, with uh, with 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 uh, intoxication versus not with sober, it's interesting too. What intoxicants also cannabis sometimes psychedelics maybe as well, not just alcohol. So there's always room to play and pick. Okay, let's talk about the meaning of Upchuck Downtown City Slicker. Oh God, news. That one lyrically is de- definitely sort of gobbledygook nonsense. It is sort of just trying to create a sort of like aesthetic. It's like more like almost impressionist. Like the the lyrics of the verse are um, a hustle and a bustle and a shuffle my way across town because this is like I'm trying to have have like a hustly bustly fun city vibe. Uh, going to meet a woman trying to keep all my lunch meat down. Everybody everywhere wanting a piece of me now. I guess like those Going have Going to meetings. a woman trying to keep my lunch meat down? What's yeah. That? What's that? That's a good one. Yeah. yeah, yeah I, I know. It sounds funny, trying right? Trying to keep my lunch meat yeah, down. Yeah. I remember when I was a kid, we'd call like uh, like deli, sliced deli meat, lunch meat, because you'd put yeah, it on yeah, your yeah. lunch sandwiches. Yeah. And I was just remembered one day As the As in term. the nervousness or the anxiety of... Yeah. It's yeah. like, I'm nervous. I'm trying not to like throw, throw up in the subway oh, okay. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I just liked... Trying to keep my lunch meat down is just yeah, yeah. a funny like turn of turn of phrase. Not even turn of phrase, just a couple of words together that kind of make you go, "Huh, that's funny." Yeah. Um, Good stuff. So yeah, I guess this all makes sense. This is less gobbledygook than I thought yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, everybody everywhere is wanting a piece of me now. Got a million friends trying to do things all the time, so it's like trying to like keep up with plans and whatever. Um, uh, and saying no, um, saying yes to things that accelerate you potentially, and yeah, no, you know, like just that. this is. I'm not trying to come up with answers. I'm just trying to like create a embody a like a feeling or an environment. I'm trying to like like I feel like a. It's rare that you know a painting tells you what to do or is like prescriptive in what it's saying about how to be or whatever you know it's sort of like it presents you with a an image uh and it's trying to like uh create or like represent some sort of feeling or some yeah it's trying to create some sort of feeling generally i feel like um so yeah that's that's usually what i'm trying to do i kind of i'm into the like i come from it from a very aesthetic place um and having like a literal meeting is something that sort of emerges afterwards, maybe, but it's not always like a thing I mean or like a thing that's real. You know, even when I'm saying like I or me, um, I might not be even might not even be talking about a thing that's about me. Um, although recently I've done that a lot more. Uh, I got really into like uh, bright eyes, probably like three or probably like four years ago. Bright Eyes. Bright Eyes, or five years ago. Me, what is it? Uh, it's a band. Okay. Connor Roberts, great. Recommend him. Check it out. Okay. Uh, and he writes like really good, like very personal, at least seeming songs. I don't know about. I don't know how much of these are like actually him talking about experiences he's had or whatever. But I don't know. I, I just got really into that. So it took me a long time to actually like express myself and like what I'm feeling uh, and I've sort of like gotten into that more in the past like probably five years yeah yeah um, and that's which is good it's fun I like yeah. it yeah yeah it also is most uh, it's most relatable to your life journey and then you get to express that through through yeah. music it's the most cathartic for me to write cathartic for you to write yeah, <laughs> yeah. correct yes yes okay I want you to um, you know, we, we, here we have instruments and we have you singing, and this is not being played through, you know, live in person is not being played through a, a, uh, a compression, an audio compression, digital audio compression. And we were streaming know. this? Yes, but oh, it's so getting for other compressed. people, so this is the key, right? So, this is what I want to ask you about. <laughs> yeah. So, Evan, how many years you did audio engineering here at uh, San Francisco State? University, yeah, I went. Right? I did their uh, recording industry program. Recording industry program. So yeah, and that was almost uh, how many years ago was that? Eight, 
Is it a while Something ago? like that. Eight it was a long ago. time yeah, ago. Yeah, it was a while ago. So my, here's, a, here's an interesting thing is when you understand audio engineering, like Evan's coming in here and he's like, yo, there's all this stuff with the mixer and the mics and everything. And, <laughs> and so, These guys had the mics pointed the wrong way. I know, I know. We're newbies. We're newbies. We're trying to figure things out. I here. do remember watching this before, watching an episode of, the being, of this and being like, that mic, I'm pretty sure that's not supposed to go that way. Yeah, yeah, except except this, is, <laughs> this is the first episode we're doing with the, with the Audio Technica mics. We were yeah, using well, labs, but then we did, maybe we used some of these you know, why are you watching our shit not liking it or making comments why didn't you comment about the mic you know you're not supposed to use those mics like that why can't you help out people I, you look, know you gotta, i don't a, get on the defensive when i get corrected <laughs> ron that knowledge isn't free <laughs> that knowledge is you had me on the show so i'll help you out yeah yeah me right. turning this 90 degrees is pro bono you pro know bono. don't have yeah, to worry yeah, about yeah. it so, so then with this audio engineering knowledge, um, a couple questions are, you know, because of the really interesting, uh, um, you know, you were giving this example of, of having a, 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 a multi-track player that would then make, you know, multi single track that you could record on top of again, making a multi-track, this type of stuff and seeing the evolution of the technology and all the way until now where we have the equipment that we have. So I want you to talk about the importance of um, the technological advances we've had in terms of what it's done for music industry, but also how crazy it is having a guitar right here in person and the vibration that you get from that and the quality you get from that versus when it gets compressed through the um, digital compression algorithms and out through people's speakers. Evan, hit us. Hit us with the knowledge. These questions. <laughs> that is funny. What is with these questions? Evan, hit but us answer with the, the question, Evan. Answer the question. It's all about that knowledge. Uh, wait, so it was the importance of music technology? The advancement of music advancement. technology over yeah, time. And then, that I can do. Yep. Let's do that and then okay. ask me the other one again. Perfect, go ahead. Uh, it got better, so life is better for everybody. Uh, I don't have to do crappy recording on a tape recorded over and over and over, and over again yeah. into oblivion because that has its own type of compression. Compression is a really good thing, I have to say, by the way. I feel people like I think people have this intuitive sense that you want the raw shit. You want it raw and uncompressed. But like compression is really helpful and and, it, and enables a lot of different things. And also, we got to be careful about the way that we're using the term compression because compression... There's like the digital compression that you do to a file to make it smaller to send it like over the internet and then have it uncompressed, which is not my expertise. I don't really know mm-hmm. a lot about that. Um, or the compression that turns a raw audio file into a MP3 as opposed to a, a lossless audio file. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Again, I don't know a lot about how they do that or how that works. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there's a, a, a quantifiable difference in the caliber. Of yeah, the yeah, yeah. When I export an MP3 from my uh, recording program and listen to it next to the lossless WAV file that I export, it's like years difference. Wow. I li- like I listen to the MP3 and I'm like, did I do this wrong? Like, <laughs> did I like fuck up somehow? Because it like sounds so bad. But I don't know. Yeah, and that that's the thing. I don't know how to mess with like compression settings to make yeah. those sound good. Um, but uh, back to the advancement of audio technology it's really great I remember when I first so I went from like recording on a cassette tapes to getting a little digital recorder that was like this big and could record like eight tracks yeah. um, and that was like really fun to use and uh, uh, DAW's um, re- recording software was really expensive and sort of prohibitive at the time but now it's gotten really I mean, relatively cheap. I guess I still have to spend a bunch of money. To I got I got a student discount on Pro Tools, so I only had to spend Pro like Tools. Is, we could have used you at that Afghani gig we did the other night with Pro Tools. You have some Pro Tools. Pro problems? Tools is great. No, we just need when we when we record a live performance with multi tracks, it's really hit or miss. I we've had this conversation before to get that um, to get that mix. You need Tough. you need your multi tracks. You need your vocals, your guitar, your bass, your drums, uh, all on different tracks to, to remix hard. it. If you can do it on the fly, <laughs> you know that that's great. You're you know you should be making a lot of money. But um, with what you need, Pro Tools and uh, and and uh, yeah, and and there's not. I remember like Pro Tools was the industry standard when I started getting into uh, recording on the computers more. Hmm. 
now there's like a million of them and they're mm. all great. You know, you can get a cheaper. Are they cheaper? Not really. Okay. They're still pretty expensive. Well, nowadays, uh, everything, you can't just buy the program anymore. Like I have a sort of like license that's grandfathered in so yeah. I can read download it when I get a new computer or whatever. But if you're like new to the, the Pro Tools world, you have to basically do the renting system or where it's like... monthly subscription. Yeah, to the, the subscription. Yeah, we, 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 we're so in the Adobe Club. Do. Yeah. Premiere, yeah. Photoshop. Yeah, everything's After like effects. that now. Yeah. 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 But that is that that does make it easier as like an uh, entering initially. It's a lot of money over the long term, but you can, you know, if you want opt in, opt out. Yeah, faster. opt in, yeah. opt out, yeah. and having access to even just the basic plugin suite in a, in a program like Pro Tools is like I've like all these songs I just did with the basic stuff in Pro Tools because I was very poor for a long time and couldn't like afford like nicer, really nice equipment or. Uh, nicer plugins or whatever um so that advancement has been like great like you yeah. know you can do a professional recording and you're with pro home. tools on your on your yeah you can do it with garage band you know with garage band too yes, uh, yes. Yeah. garage band is a huge pain in the ass to use but if yeah. garage band are you, you guys gotta, talking about garage band yeah, yeah. it comes free with your computer the, the tools yeah that's very interesting so the tools have been democratized to the point where we can express more of our artistic... I know that I would say democratized. Well, GarageBand comes with your computer, like you just said, and so... Yeah, that, we don't vote on that. It's not a... Well, I wouldn't the, say... Well, the democratization of a tool also means just the widespreading of it in terms of the oh, pricing. Yeah, yeah. The pricing of it, the widespreading of it. So if sure, it now sure. comes with the, um, the, 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 the computers that we purchase, then it makes it easier for people to express themselves artistically um, yeah. because now they don't have to have these bulky-ass, big-ass equipments. And you can the, get Audacity on the internet for free. Yeah. And the company's actually spent all the equipment that's behind Ron right now um, and all the equipment that we have now on this set basically 20 years later plus the years later plus then what's happening after this in the next 20 years whatever the technology will be it's these companies and the engineers and designers that work at these companies that push the boundaries of what existed you know a couple decades ago with ron's equipment to the couple uh to the current systems and then to what the future systems will be so it's good that we have these incentive systems for companies to push the boundaries of what exists to make it easier for us to have democratized tools for artistic expression of all sorts Okay. Yeah. yeah. So then, your um, the last point that that w we we covered. You actually covered um, the compression as well in your last. Okay. Point. So, okay. There's also yes. a compressor, which is an audio tool that's very helpful and helps you fit things together. I'm learning that myself. I, that that would come in yeah. handy. That can actually that, like, that. in a way, add fidelity. Like people think of compression in a digital sense as uh, removing fidelity. Um, you can add fidelity with a compressor. Yeah, in a sense. Uh, you remove, you're exchanging in a dynamic range for fidelity, which I'm just glad I got to say that sentence. Um, but basically what it does, it's a, it's an automated volume knob. You set a threshold level and when the audio goes above that threshold, ah. it turns the volume down by a certain amount. Interesting. Oh, that sounds, that'd be great for all the peaks that we have. And when yeah. people go ah -ha! and laugh or, you know, go. Yeah. 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 yeah every time of worked with you guys I'm like we gotta get some compressors in here but they're a really useful audio tool which uh, adds fidelity in the way that it makes the quieter parts louder really what it does is bring the oh. louder part the louder parts down and it brings so the then quieter you can, parts louder too well then you can turn the whole thing up oh so okay. that's how you use a compressor to make the quiet parts louder interesting yeah um, and yeah so that's Tools like that are awesome. Oh, yeah, they're yeah. great. Yeah. There's a million ways to... But, yeah, that's a compressor in the audio Basically world. Basically an if-then statement, if the decibels reach above 7 yeah. dB and then just bring up the... Um, bring down what goes above that 7 yeah. dB line back down to yeah, 7. Yeah, and then seven. you can set a ratio so you can like have it reduced by half, by a third. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah these, are, these are rocking. You can choose how quickly it catches the signal so you can have the peak of the loudness come in and like get that loudness for a second and have it clamp down afterwards so that uh, oh. uh, that retains some of the the transients that yeah. makes it sound less compressed it just kind of retains some of the dynamic range so it sounds more like full of life or whatever um, yeah yeah because that's that's the one thing if you compress stuff too much it just starts to sound like dead and like you know the this 
with the songs I write, I like the energy to go up and down, and you want to retain that this sort yes. of like yes. changes in energy, and you can definitely overdo it with tools like compressors. Uh, so yeah, it's yeah. it's a whole thing. It's yeah, a whole thing, kids. Yeah, audio engineering, I'm glad that you're bringing up all this nuance to it because the more that we can understand how it actually works, it's like double clicking into audio engineering and like looking deeper into it versus just seeing it at the surface level. Sure. Whenever you're like at a restaurant and you just order food and you've never actually worked in the kitchen um, or in the operations of a restaurant, it's very similar. You got to double click into the restaurant to be able to know what it's like getting behind the eyes versus same thing with audio engineering. Just be nice to your servers. That's it. Just yeah, don't yeah. be a pain in the ass. Be nice to the audio engineers. Yeah. Uh, be nice to me too yes, man I gotta tell you doing like sound for live events I've never I don't think there's an, uh, another job in the world where you get more unsolicited opinions about how you should be doing your job than when you're like the sound guy at an event it's interesting like, it's always and the musicians are always cool it's like the mom of the lead singer oh yeah that is the, that's <laughs> the so it's like thing. I can't yeah, hear yeah. my baby enough and I'm like well yeah, that, that, that gig we had in uh, San Leandro was we, we were dealing with that sort of stuff yeah it's a tough world out there yeah. you know there's difficult acoustic environments all over the place when I work at Piano Fight it's just like a sort of difficult environment to work in I can't turn things up too much we get a lot of feedback and it's just it's a whole thing yeah but yeah. Th th there has been improvement to uh that that system out front at anyway are you talking about out front yeah yeah, yeah. They, they, they definitely went through uh it's a significant improvement a little bit give, give him at some my props. behest <laughs> good keep on keep on took a lot of i'm just constantly poking cole being like i need yeah. this i want this yeah, yeah, yeah. cole does all right it is fine you're doing great, Cole. You're doing great, Cole. Shout out to Piano Fight. <laughs> yes, big I shout out. I almost wore my Piano Fight shirt. Piano. Okay, now on the way out, we want to ask you about the two things that you were teaching us about. Um, your band, The Green Door, has mm -hmm. been going on for five Green years. Door. Five years, and you guys play... They've been around for like eight. I joined them like eight. maybe five you years You joined ago, five. Five-piece like five piece band. Five-piece band. Two guitars, drums, keyboard, and bass? Bass, yep. Bass. And then... Um, and then you guys play about um, monthly or so around the Bay Area. Yeah. Okay. And then also, um, so why don't Could you show us? Yeah. May sixteenth at the Parkside. Oh, the May sixteenth at the Parkside. Yep. Okay. I cool. think it's the sixteenth. What, what time is that? It's at? A, the full five piece band is playing there. It's at Showtime. I don't know. Seven, nine, seven, something seven, like that. Seven, nine, something like that. Yeah. No, just four of us. Our keyboardist lives in Sacramento, and he's a he's a teacher. Oh. Um, cool. So he doesn't always can can't always make it. Now, now, teach us about the complexities of being a part of a five-piece band. This is, again, it's hard to rally the uh, sheep. Have you ever tried to get five adults in a room together? Very hard. Not we tried at work. doing it on the show, five <laughs> guests at the same yeah. time. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's hard it's, stuff. It's really hard to yeah. get people together. Um, yeah. You know, those complexities are the complexities of any sort of uh, relationships you have with uh Groups well, of people well, and individuals. Who's, who's deciding on the on the songs, on the lyrics, on the uh, on the when the instruments come in or when they go out? You know, we generally it's like a mix of sort of like a tourship where one person takes control and um, uh, uh, collaboration. You know. Uh, Generally, someone will bring in a song, and then we'll all kind of play it together, and we'll either like jam on it to figure out what we want to do with it, or the person will have a very definite idea of what they want to do, and then, you know, because we always want to like serve the uh, artistic um, direction or impulses of like the person who wrote it, um, so you kind of like that person will have like as much or as little control as they want over like how it goes and you know it's like so we'll either like let someone direct how it's how the song's gonna come together or we'll just suggest parts or you know there's like a myriad of different ways something can kind of come together it's a sort of ongoing evolving process that is not always clearly defined yeah, so sometimes it's in, um, individuals taking a little bit more authorship. Sometimes it's more of the collective authorship. Yeah. And you guys have to practice in order to be able to determine what that is for every song. And Yeah, that and it's stuff. like, it's a, it's a relationship uh, that we sort of like navigate 
uh, all the time and kind of like figure out the best yes, way to do yes, it. Yes. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. It's a fun time. Yeah, yeah. I love those guys. We have so much fun together. So the, these are the again. These are the the questions of how humans um, build things together. It's similar with a band as it is with you know Ron and I building simulation um, or any startup that's working together with multiple um, founders. This is all. This is all very uh, even a couple um, in like a relationship. How uh, a couple, two people end up um, starting a family. All this different type of dynamics. So it's interesting to be able to think about it in terms of a band and how that works with leadership. Yeah, we, we, I think the one sort of band specific thing, or this is like true of art generally, like when you're creating art with a group of people, because it's kind of, it's the weird complication of like, it's your leisure thing. Like it's the thing that you want to do for fun. Uh, so you like want to have a good time, but it, you also want to do the work to make a thing that's really good. Yes, so there's yes, like yes. a lot of different oh, sort of competing um impulses or um oh, what's the word like uh it's like balancing out the pinnacle of artistic expression with the desire for leisure kind of uh what's the word i'm thinking of i forgot a word dichotomy no capitulate no, no no it's the it's capitulate capitulate, capitulate yeah. surrender yeah. <laughs> capitulate. How, do we, how do we get you to capitulate right now ron <laughs> No, but there's like competing incentives, not just between people, but like oh, intra competing incentives. Yeah, not just like between people, but bet like between in your own brain. You know, like you want to have a good time, but you want to like get stuff done. Yeah. Uh, you want to like, you know, at like band practice, like we want to hang out and chat, but we also want to like work on music. So it's like, it's definitely an interesting sort of relationship to navigate. Interesting. And sort of like, do you take charge? Are you the are you the leader of the band? Oh no, by no means. Really? <laughs> I would think you would be. No, 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 no. It's I mean, there's no like leader really. Someone's yeah, got to take charge. Well, the thing is, like, generally whoever wrote the song that we're writing leads that uh, process. Yeah, yeah. And then when it's like, you know, like the people, the guy people always want to talk to is Mike because he sings most of the songs, so he's kind of like the face. Um, Although the like secret face of the band is our drummer because she's uh, she's got the the most like definite uh, sort of like artistic vision. Oh, that's great. Uh, What's her name? Uh, Vanessa. Vanessa. So awesome. Very very cool and good people. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, it's. Uh, that's also it's an fun. interesting dynamic is the, the the singer is the face sometimes and then the drummer can sometimes have the big vision or whatever and there's these like, yeah. Yeah, competing incentives and stuff and yeah. visions yeah. yeah and then and then our bassist is the head of transportation because <laughs> he's, he's got the big truck yeah yeah uh, I'm the head of uh, making jokes on stage making jokes you know on stage. we all have the part that we play okay that's the green door and you said May 6th May 16th I think May 16th yeah, okay. hope I got that okay. right. Okay, all right. I'm and not then, gonna pick up my phone. I'm not yeah, gonna do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, so the, you you can find the Green Door performances in the, uh, locally in the Bay Area, um, as well as some of the music online as well. Yep. Okay. iTunes, Spotify, all iTunes, that stuff. Spotify, all that stuff. Okay. Now, We the Listeners is your podcast that you yeah, conduct. Yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah. So this is a once a week podcast where you uh, speak on music production, music news, just music in general. Yeah. And this is this is cool because then again, it's one of those things where you're 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 building up your knowledge base on the subject of music by doing a podcast that then other people listen to. You're like, you know, this is a good way to. I think other people practice. listen to it. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> Only one. We we'll always start with zero listeners, then yeah. one, then two, four. <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, yeah, that's how things go. Uh, yeah, those four are just me listening to it four times. How how are the we the listeners? How, um, how is that? It's really fun. I do it uh, with a really good friend of mine from high school, who we like sort of lost contact for a few years, um, and then recently got back in touch like a year ago, and it's. I mean, in a lot of ways, the podcast is just a way for us to reconnect and, like, talk to each other. But, you know, we like to talk about the music stuff we're doing. You know, we're both interested, and in, he's also a, a writer. He, like, writes and sings. Um, and he's, like, getting more into audio engineering now. Uh, and so we just kind of talk about all things sort of music-related and just make jokes and have a good time. 
and it's uh it's fun i enjoy it we the listeners with a z with a z.com yeah, yeah you, com. you gotta put link. the www in there because bobby hasn't figured out Why the url stuff you know the internet's a tough place <laughs> so and you can find that link in the bio too to we the listeners um Okay, we want to ask you a couple questions on the way out, Evan. Okay. The normal questions we ask on the show, and then we'll normal wrap. questions. And then we will wrap with a song from one of your upcoming albums, mm-hmm. which we're excited to hear. We have not heard that one yet. All right. First simulation question. Okay. Are we alone in the cosmos? Probably not. I don't think they're coming here, but they're probably out there. I think people who think the Earth has been visited by aliens are crazy. It's just, there's no way. You know how much energy it takes to get anywhere? It's just crazy. I, 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 yeah. But they're probably out there. I mean, in a sense, we are alone because we're never going to see those people, like, ever. Like, us as a species will die out before we ever make contact with anybody. We'll, we'll, we'll die out before the messages that we've sent through like radio broadcast to different galaxies like gets anywhere you know we're like i like material like what's the word uh uh practically we're alone but like literally probably not and then i want to ask evan about what exists beyond the 3d reality are you very spiritual do you think we come into earth to play in the earth suits uh Beyond the 3D reality is the fourth dimension, time. Yeah. And then everything beyond that is a fun thought experiment people do when they're stoned. I remember someone once showing me a video explaining the ninth dimension. I'm like, yes, this is an interesting thought experiment, but it's like, can't, what? The (laughs) ninth, yeah. I I can barely grasp the fifth. Yeah, <laughs> let alone the ninth. So I, the fourth, I hear I'm you. still like, yeah. I think well, yeah. that thing's uh, sure. Oh yeah, right. Ron? That's, oh, yeah? No, that's a great answer. I'm glad he said that. What's the fifth dimension, Ron? Yeah. It's a beyond life death. It's the life sh- death. It was a show. On that's the sci-fi when you have network. to get in touch with your darker side of life and death. Death. The fifth dimension is beyond death. So and I pre can't... and pre birth. Pre birth. Fifth dimension is also pre-birth then? Yeah, I just try to... Yeah, I'm doing the best I can. See, I just want to have a good time. Yeah, you don't yeah. know. Really? All you can do is imagine what it might be or mean, but there's no way... Like, if these things even Maybe. exist, there's right. no way to even perceive them. All we them. got is... All we Maybe, have I guess. is 3D. All we Maybe. have... Is 3D understanding every day? But maybe I've been waking up as Ron Vargas for 52 years. Go off, and that's my th- <laughs> that's my th- that's my 3D reality. That's all I have. And soon, yeah. maybe to poke with the scientific probe at what exists past the 3D, which hopefully we can yeah, like, we can get there. Yeah, yeah there's yeah, the fourth yeah, yeah. D. It's time. Okay, let's ask the next question. Okay. Okay. Are we in a simulation? No. No, again, a fun thought experiment people like to do that is stupid and doesn't make any sense. I mean, like, may like, it's so th- they came out with that 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 study that said like, or th- there's some scientific experiment that said we got a result that suggests that it could be possible that we're in a simulation, which is like, which is like you take a piece of paper and. Like you make a shadow on your on your hand, and you're like, well, that could be, that could be a different planet. I mean, like we did, I don't know. Maybe it's it seems again, it seems like a a dumb thing with people that people with too much time on their hands waste their time thinking about because when they confront the actual world and the actual problems, they feel helpless and atomized, and so they retreat into these weird ideas about like fifth dimensions and. The world is a simulation. But sometimes people do execute quite well in the 3D as well as contemplate some of the past 3D philosophies as well. So that's just I another guess. thing to thing to put out there. I guess. I guess. <laughs> Evan, last question on the show. Okay. What is the most beautiful thing in the world? Oh. Uh, um, that like moment right when you wake up and then realize you don't have to go to work and just, you just like go back to sleep. That's, that's the best. This is, it makes me weep with 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 joy at the, the 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 beauty of existence when I can go back to sleep. 
that's yeah <laughs> that's the first time we've uh, heard that answer on the show yeah that's the that's only thing that there's it's just pure okay, pure yes. joy yeah um that or like um i don't know like heroin or something i mean <laughs> I, you're not doing heroin, are you? No, I'm not doing I mean, heroin. I'm so glad that heroin never, <laughs> never really done heroin. caught on with me. I just want to say that to anybody that's watching. <laughs> you know, heroin's a uh, yeah, risky business, kids. And there's a big problem with uh, uh, addiction to opiates, not just just the poppy in We're doing general. A PSA now. Opium, no, just opium. The, I'm yeah. I, I'm not a big fan of uh opiates and i'm glad, glad about that someone's <laughs> finally saying the things that people don't want to hear <laughs> heroin is bad <laughs> uh, that's no, an important I, public service announcement though it is just very 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 well, careful with the know, most addictive yeah, substances yes, there's yeah. a lot of people in trouble yeah uh, absolutely it's, yeah i Actual, walk by them every day actualizing the fullest potential into the world um, yeah 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 but yeah, but the idea up. but back to the beauty question yeah i think like Things that are beautiful or the concept of beauty can be like really fraught. Um, and there's very few things that just, I don't know, are like purely good and joyful. And I feel like they're really hard and, and like, you know, separate, like removed from all the things that make you feel bad. I don't even know if this is like a good. If, if that makes it more beautiful, if it's separate from the things that make you feel bad, but it's like, I yeah, don't know. the way you were describing it was that when you're waking up and you're realizing, like, oh, there's no burden on me to have to actually get up and go, and so I can actually sleep these extra couple hours, which in many ways people desperately need those extra yeah. couple hours. I was thinking specifically of the like when when you like go to go back to nap a little bit or whatever and you like stretch a little bit and then just that feeling of like pure relaxation runs relaxation. through your body that's that's the best that's good stuff that's that's the most beautiful that's thing. the first time we heard that one yeah i like that a lot this has been such a good show i really appreciate you coming on and teaching us about you know your life your journey i'm a teacher now S singing songwriting yeah 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 your newest album everyone go and check out all of the links below we have evanwardell.bandcamp.com Am I going to play another song in a minute? Yeah, we are. Yeah. Right, I'm going to yeah. start tuning. Oh, yeah, you tune. Keep talking. Yeah, we're, we're closing. We're going to be closing out with um, a song from one of Evan's upcoming albums. He's going to be tuning right now. Um, everyone, go and check out the links below to evanwardell.bandcamp.com Also, uh, wethelisteners.com is the podcast. You can find Evan's uh, newest album, Little Boy. It was released in January 2019. We highly recommend checking out Medical Mechanica. It's one of our favorite songs. He played Upchuck Downtown City Slicker Blues um, from that album as well. So go and check that out on Spotify. The link's below. His Instagram and Twitter link as well as below. And much love thank you everyone for tuning in we greatly appreciate it we would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on the episode uh go and share more content around singing songwriting and becoming an artist around your communities huge shout out to ron vagas our producer and director we love you very much thank you ronnie Vargas. And also, um, support the artists and entrepreneurs that you believe in in your communities. Support Simulation. Our links are below as well. We would love your support helping us scale. Much love. Thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. And we are going to be outroing with Evan Wardell's song from one of his upcoming albums. Thanks, everyone. Much love. Peace. Yeah. I would have loved to play Medical Mechanica, but that's one of the... It doesn't work without a band. It doesn't translate as well in acoustic. So I, it's funny when I play, because uh, all the stuff I write and record is like uh, me doing it solo. I have to be judicious about the songs that I play because not all of them work without a bunch of stuff. But sometimes I can make them work with the, this thing and this thing. Okay, I'm going to stop talking. This song doesn't have a name, but it's fun. Sitting in his chair just waiting to die While the postman waits to get onto a bus He always hustles downtown to deliver to the rest
rest of us And it's hard to be kind But he doesn't really seem to mind But I'm still gonna give it a try I'm just lucky I'm empathy starved and I'm morally thin I don't think I have the strength or the courage to get up again and There's this mountain of guilt at the center of town Even busy folks take the long way to get around And it's hard to ignore Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Thank that you. was Thank great. You. Bye, guys. Bye, yeah, thanks bye. for uh, coming on. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> you gonna turn off the stream now so my goodbye makes sense? Okay. Yeah. Good stuff. Good. Good. Yeah, that was fun. Good stuff, Evan. Ugh. I did it. Ugh. Thank you. Thank you.